All right, so I've had a couple more opportunities to use the Canon R5 on some jobs over the past two or so weeks, and I thought I would share some more results using this camera. Hey, don't forget about the R6. I was getting there. Hey, everybody. I actually have to wear my glasses when I work with this camera because the files are so small. He's, he's kidding. Of course I'm kidding. Hey, can I really? get some room here, though? We're not, we're not gonna do this whole video like this. Why not? Can I, okay, can I at least say the thing? Are you talking about the, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, but let me tell everyone what this video is about first. All right, deal. All right, so we will take a look, at, we will take a look at files from both of these cameras from the same shoot. Oh, after we roll that intro. Okay, so first off, I wanna thank my buddy Joe from Ozio Gear. He hired me, so thank you for that. Um, but I had this idea uh, for the shoot to take both of these cameras and trying to use them back to back to see what the differences might be, if any. Joe has his own YouTube channel, and in the spirit of YouTube, I asked him if he would mind if I did a little camera testing on this shoot. Uh, he was down for it, so I really appreciate it. Thanks again, Joe. Okay, so going into this, I was wanting to try my best to set these guys up as similarly as possible. I gotta say that 10 times. Uh, considering I don't have two of the same lenses, especially this, this one here, um, I thought the closest I could get would be using this 28 to 70 on the R5 and the 24 to 105 on the R6. To keep things fair, I wouldn't take the 24 to 70 below F4, and I would use the same ISO and shutter speed on each. Um, but don't underestimate this 24 to 105 lens. It's, it's super solid. And this combo on the R6 is pretty fantastic for just about any uh, situation and when, where photography is concerned. Um, oh, and I was uh, shooting raw files in, in each camera. Let me just do a little disclaimer too, since this isn't gonna be some super technical review of either camera, uh, but more about my impressions uh, about using them for photography, and then just taking a look at some of the resulting images. And if I wanted to get technical, I would have locked them both off on tripods you know, while for photographing you know, still subjects. You know, but, but what fun is that? Uh, okay. Just to get it out of the way, and although this info is everywhere, let's uh, just list the quick spec differences between these two cameras. Uh, the R5 has a 45 megapixel sensor that results in a file that is a little over 18 by 27 inches straight out of the camera. And my raw file sizes, um, in average, they average around 48 megabytes per file. The R6 has a 20 megapixel sensor, and those files are a little over 12 by 18 inches right out of the camera, and the file sizes are around 23 to 24 megabytes. So right off the bat, you can see the R6 puts out a decent file size for most uses. Uh, if you're the type of photographer who creates images where you aren't having to crop a lot and you appreciate your hard drive space, then this is your guy right here. Uh, another way around the smaller file size uh, when you need those detail shots is just to zoom or even just get closer to your subjects. As you could see from the example I played at the beginning of this video. Uh, and I really found the R6 to handle very similarly to the R5. And on a shoot like this, it could have easily been my A camera. Uh, the only real differences uh, externally between the two is this uh, dial on top of the uh, R6, um, which takes the place of this screen, uh, or the LCD screen that is on the R5. The uh, R6 also has just a slightly uh, smaller back screen, or you know, back LCD, and it's just a little bit lighter. Uh, Performance-wise, 
Uh, they feel very similar, both with the fantastic autofocus, and I really enjoyed working uh, with the files from both of these cameras. Um, in my previous video, I showed off some of the sharpness from the R5, and the same performance is evident, is evident from this shoot as well. Uh, these files I'm showing here are only processed through Camera Raw. However, the creative direction from this shoot was to make these images look more like they were taken later in the fall, since that's when you would be wearing the type of gear we were photographing. As you can see, the advantage of having files like these is that they give you so much latitude when you have to craft images based on client requests. And having worked with these files from the R6, I'm confident in saying that they are definitely up to the task. And really, the only difference between those and the, and the R5 is, is a smaller form factor for the most part. Okay, a uh, quick lighting instruction for those of you who have made it this far in the video. Uh, for these shots where we are re recreating the sun, I've got a Profoto head with a reflector placed over on this side of my subject. And it has a yellow gel to recreate what would be the sun. Uh, on the other side, I've got a medium umbrella with another Profoto that's providing the fill. And then I'm balancing or controlling the ambient light with the shutter speed. So this is a pretty fun effect when you're a little too late for a sunrise and want to sleep in. Well, I guess that about does it for me on this one. To sum it up, this R6 is a very capable camera for photography. And I'm pretty confident in it serving uh, as my B camera up until I can get another one of these R5s in. And that's, you know, the reason I, I prefer the R5 is my work does often need that extra resolution um, that I'm fortunately paid to provide my clients, or at least I used to be <laughs> paid before uh, 2020 hit the scene. But things have been picking up a bit here lately, so let's just hope that continues. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, you know, please feel free to leave those down below. Pretty sure we hit a record with my last video. I've still got to reply to some of the comments, which I'll do after I get this video put together. Um, oh, and I've got some new, uh, new lids. You, can, you might have noticed it from the intro with a video here. Um, I went with a uh, kind of a subtle camo pattern on these. But uh, I tell you what, if one of you would like one of these, uh, just drop a comment with your Instagram account and I'll pick a random comment over the next week and get this bad boy in the mail to you. Okay, so if you uh, feel like you've enjoyed yourself here or maybe learned something, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. And remember to hit that bell so YouTube will let you know I'm here. Uh, by the way, next week is stacking up to be a busy one, so I'm hoping to have another behind the scenes video afterwards or maybe even during the next week. In the meantime, find me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and Twitter. Please stay safe and healthy out there. And I hope to be here or actually maybe on a photo set for the next one. Real quick, I just thought I'd show uh, what it takes for me to pull off the cloning stunt like I had in that uh, intro. <laughs> so I can remember where I need to look and can try to remember what the heck I'm supposed to say. Yeah, if you only knew how many takes that took to get right. <laughs> See y'all next video.